about 30 seconds theoretically. November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra. November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra. This is Kilo Golf 4 Alpha Kilo Victor. Can you copy? Over. November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra. November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra. This is Kilo Golf 4 Alpha Kilo Victor. Do you copy? Over. You're still early. Remind them it's still early. But about 10 seconds. November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra. November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra. This is Kilo Golf 4 Alpha Kilo Victor. Do you copy? Over. Kilo Golf 4 Alpha Kilo Victor. This is November uh, Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra. We got. Hopefully you can hear how excited we, we are. Uh, as I've listened to your con colleagues talk to schools just like this 35 times, but never talked to any of them. I imagine the only people more excited than me to talk to you are the students. Are you ready for their questions? Over. I think I'm pretty excited too, and I am ready for your questions. What's the biggest challenge you face during your time in space? Over. My biggest challenge is just to keep up with all the hard work that we have to do every day. It, uh, it's a constant grind and you have to keep up with it because you have to maintain the systems and you have to take care of yourself and you have to take care of your friends. How are everyday tasks in space different from everyday tasks on Earth? Over. Well, the tasks in space you don't have uh, gravity holding you on the ground, so every time you go to move a box or you go to put food in your mouth, it wants to go somewhere else, so you have to figure out how to get it there without making a mess or getting hurt. What is your favorite thing about seeing Earth from space? Over. My favorite thing about seeing Earth from space is how beautiful it is, especially at sunrise. It's a nice blue strip, and you can see how thin our atmosphere is. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. If you had to give advice to a future astronaut about something they should know that training did not prepare them for, what would you tell them? Over. Work on your stay to itness, uh, perseverance. Don't ever give up. Just have true grit and don't ever give up. What type of food do you miss the most and how can you be sure that you are receiving adequate nutrition with the foods you are limited to on eating on board the ISS? Over. I miss ice cream and pizza, uh, but fortunately uh, the folks on the ground make us good food that is full of nutrition and gives us the proper balance that we need, and it does not include um, ice cream or pizza for me. What is your daily routine like in space, and how is it different from your daily routine on Earth? Over. Well, the daily routine here in space is uh, pretty much uh, all work with a little bit, uh, just an hour or two for yourself, and then sleep. On, uh, on Earth, you have a little bit more time to take care of your family and to take care of yourself. But in space, it's a lot of work, and, uh, and we, uh, we, our whole day revolves around the work schedule. What, is, what inspired you to become an astronaut, and what has been the most challenging part of your journey? Over. Uh, Neil Armstrong, when he walked on the moon, inspired me to become an astronaut. That's when I decided that I wanted to give this a try. It was very exciting to, to see uh, a new operation in space like that. The most challenging part was staying, keeping my brain in the game and not giving up. How would you describe what launching feels like? Over. Uh, the launch feels like uh, like you're you're launching in a very powerful airplane and you're climbing through altitude very quickly and you can feel the rocket rolling and shuddering a little bit as it's making its corrections and then when uh, the motors slow down and you're in space it feels like you're flying upside down and I felt like that for two days until we launched until we docked with the International Space Station. How will the experiments you have conducted on this mission impact humanity? Over. Well, we, we have a lot of experiments up here that uh, over 250 of them that are geared towards uh, life on Earth. And uh, some of the stuff we're looking at is, is uh, D, uh, how DNA works uh, and how it uh, splits up in uh, space. We're also looking at how plants grow, and uh, we're also looking at how bones lose density. And uh, we, can, uh, we can help a lot of people with osteoporosis by the research we're doing on station. How do you know when to go to sleep and when to wake up? How has this experience impacted your circadian rhythm? Over. 
Well, you're right. The circadian rhythm uh, gets a little bit crazy up here, but uh, we get in a routine and uh, we pretty much work until we're tired and then we sleep. And uh, we sleep a little bit less here on station than we do on the Earth, uh, but uh, but we stay on a, on a schedule. And we use the, the Greenwich Mean Time, Zulu Time, um, as our standard. Describe your exercises routine and the equipment you use, that you use. Over. Every day we have to do two and a half hours of, uh, of exercise, and uh, an hour and a half of it is lifting weights, and an hour of it is, uh, um, is uh, uh, you know, running or, uh, or riding the bike. Um, so uh, we pretty much, we have an A-RED machine, which is uh, designed to lift weights, and we have a couple of, uh, of bicycles and a, and a treadmill up here, simulated, of course, but they give us the exercise we need. How does your research relate to the colonization of Mars? Over. To go to Mars, we, we have to know how the body's going to react to long duration flight in space. We have to know how to, how to combat and fix bone loss um, when we're uh, up here in uh, zero gravity. So being up here allows us to study all of these phenomena so that we can have a good plan of action to, to help mitigate those circumstances when we go to Mars. How is gravi gravitropism in plants different in space, over. Well, on the ground, the plants, when roots grow, they know where gravity is, so they tend to go down into the earth. But in space, there's no gravity, so they don't really know. And so we're, they're starting to uh, realize that maybe they go towards different uh, uh, frequencies of light, or um, and, and, uh, and sometimes we see them spiral towards uh, higher nutrients. Uh, but we are studying that and trying to figure, out, figure it out. How do you entertain yourself in your spare time? Over. Uh, I try to get some time to look out the window and take pictures. Uh, we have a couple of guitars up here, so I play guitar a little bit. Uh, but mostly I like sitting around with my crewmates and telling jokes and being funny and, uh, and just kind of winding down at the end of the day. Describe what it feels like to wear your astronaut suit. Over. Well, I assume you're talking about the astronaut suit. We used to do spacewalks, and it is very painful. It hurts. Uh, to get in, it's a very tight fit, and when you're in, you have to, uh, 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 it's, it's just very tight, and you're in for long periods of time. Uh, but all that being said, it's a safe, very safe suit, and I feel very safe in it. What kind of medical tests have you gone through to prepare for your mission, and what kinds of tests will you have to go through when you return to Earth? Over. So we do every uh, kind of medical test that you can imagine, which includes a lot of MRIs. We do an ultrasound on all our internal organs, and we do a mapping of all our bones and uh, measure bone density. And we have to redo all of those medical tests when we go back to make sure that everything's normal. How has microgravity impacted your body, and how does it feel different from Earth's gravity? Over. Well, microgravity kind of causes a fluid shift, and so all the fluid that used to hang around in my legs now is spread out through my body, so my face feels a little fatter, and then the, um, uh, and our, my bone density uh, starts to go down as soon as uh, you get out of gravity because you're not uh, carrying any weight on your spine anymore. So we, we work out a lot up here to make sure that uh, we minimize those, uh, those impacts. Uh, but actually, uh, my body doesn't feel that much different. It feels very rested, and when I sleep, it's a very nice sleep up here because there's no pressure points. Describe some common types of technology on the International Space Station that are essential for astronauts to survive in space. Over. Well, one of the essential types of technology is uh, d generation of water. Uh, when uh, it's very difficult to just have flowing, you don't. Have, we don't have flowing water up here on space station, so every drop of water is valuable. So what we do is when we sweat. Well, when we throw something out or some water gets uh, picked up in a towel, it dries out, goes into the atmosphere, and then it goes into a big machine that uh, filters it out and cleans it and sends it back to, uh, to our water drinking water. And the, we do the same thing with our pee, our urine. We clean it and filter it, and then we turn it into drinking water. What is one thing you look forward to doing when you return to Earth? Over. I really look forward to getting a nice hot shower. <laughs> What is the scariest thing that's ever happened to you when you were in space? Over. Well, I guess the scariest thing was the uh, spacewalk I did last week, but it wasn't that scary. It was just new, and I was very anxious, so I was hanging on really tight. But, but it was kind of neat to be standing out at the end of the station in my little foot restraint and peering down at the Earth with nothing in between me and the atmosphere. It was, uh, it was pretty, pretty surreal. On behalf of the students at Moore Square Middle, thank you.
thank you to all the students. God bless. 73, NA1SS, Kilo Golf 4, Alpha Kilo Victor, clear. 73, KG4AKB, clear. International Space Station, signing off. Thank you.